So over the years, Marvel has had some very interesting comic book characters. They have had some characters that simply make us ask, why in God's name would they make this character? And in this video, <laughs> I don't know why the hell I'm doing this. In this video, we're going to be talking about one of those characters. Today, we're going to be discussing the unbeatable Squirrel Girl. So initially appearing in Marvel Super Heroes Volume 2, Issue Number 8 in 1992, Squirrel Girl was a creation of a man named Will Murray. And as far as Will Murray and Steve Ditko, who had co-created uh, Squirrel Girl, were concerned, a lot of the comics in the 1990s were really starting to move towards a darker edge. And we saw that with a lot of the X-Men stories, things that would lead up to uh, the Age of Apocalypse in 1995. And so what they wanted to do was effectively go back to an age when comic books were less dark. They wanted to create a more upbeat and kind of a fun character. Now, Squirrel Girl, as she's first brought to us, meets up with Iron Man. But what Iron Man is doing here is he's basically testing the uh, new radar in his armor that allows him to basically see without seeing. That is to say, the radar will tell him whether or not he's colliding with anything. So if for some reason he loses the ability to see that his, uh, his, his armor and his suit can still function the way it's supposed to. And so what happens as he's traveling through this forest is that he's uh, being watched by a woman who has the attributes of a squirrel. And so what she does is she pounces on Iron Man. And the whole reason for this, her logic, is that she simply wanted to demonstrate to Iron Man that she was capable of sneaking up on him, that she was capable of, uh, of I guess, demonstrating that she would be a formidable person. And so what she does here when Tony Stark asks who she is, is she introduces herself as Squirrel Girl. Now what she also does is give this sort of explanation about who, we, who she is, what she's capable of, and how it is she got her abilities. But it's very kind of uh, brief. It's very just kind of thrown in there the way that uh, Will Murray and Steve Ditko do this. What they basically tell us here is that she's a mutant, that she's somewhere along the line developed mutant powers that allowed her to speak to squirrels, but that she also has the ability to, uh, I guess, the agility of a squirrel in the sense that she's very, very nimble. She can move around quite well. And of course, she also has various other attributes, including a tail as well as uh, claws that she's fashioned for herself that allow her to uh, have the kind of, um, I guess, maybe sharp appendages that squirrels normally do. But she also goes as far as to say that she'd encountered another person as well. And when she goes on to describe this person as, a per as an individual wearing green, that we ultimately learn this person was Dr. Doom. And so what happens is that Dr. Doom appears for the purpose of capturing Tony Stark. Now, we don't really know exactly why it is that he's decided to single out Tony Stark, and I would go as far as to say this is really just a function of the plot. But what we learn is that Dr. Doom intends to, to throw Tony Stark out into the water, to basically just sink him and uh, presumably leave him for dead. Now again, we know that Tony Stark could probably escape this circumstance, which is why I say it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but what happens here is that Dr. Doom takes the bodies of Tony Stark and Squirrel Girl onto his ship. Now the big mistake that Dr. Doom makes here is that because Squirrel Girl effectively can talk to squirrels and has some uh, kinds of claws, he doesn't really take her seriously, he doesn't really think she matters that much. And so what we find is that Tony Stark Stark is uh, effectively stuck onto the ship. He's being held captive, but Squirrel Girl can still move around. She can still function here. And so what she does is she uh, calls through the air vents for various squirrels. And as the ship's passing over a forest, the, the squirrels seem to respond and they answer her call. And so what happens is these squirrels begin attacking the ship in mass. But what they also do <laughs> is they directly attack Dr. Doom. And this is what makes, uh, what made Squirrel Girl an instant hit among a lot of comic book fans because what we find is that Dr. Doom shouts out one of the most famous phrases in the history of comic books when he says, confound these wretched rodents, for every one I fling away, a dozen more vex me. <laughs> <laughs> basically telling us that Dr. Doom is being overwhelmed by squirrels. And <laughs> this is absolutely ridiculous. And so what happens is that uh, Dr. Doom, realizing that he cannot escape the uh, overwhelming power of Squirrel Girl and her squirrels, eventually abandons the ship. He simply just jumps away. And so what he does is he jumps into the water and begins burrowing away to try to get away as fast as he can. But as a result, his mask is left behind, which is the only thing that, uh, that Iron Man is able to capture. Capture. And so what we find is that when the story comes to an end, that while Squirrel Girl is still being rebuked by Iron Man, while of course he continues to say that she's simply just too young to be part of the Avengers, what he does say is that he will basically put in a good word for her with uh, Captain America so that when the time comes and she gets older, that she'll be able to join the Avengers proper.
So following Squirrel Girl's initial appearance in Marvel Super Heroes, she really just kind of takes a back seat after this. In fact, her character won't really make any kind of appearances in Marvel Comics until over 10 years later. Now, this comes about around 2004, 2005 or so, when she's written into the Great Lakes Avengers by Dan Slott. And the whole reason for this is because the Great Lakes Avengers were basically, it was basically a team that was composed of some pretty useless people. It was really just a way for them to inject, for Marvel to inject some kind of comedy into the otherwise very serious tones of the X-Men, of the uh, the new Avengers, of the, uh, of the Avengers proper. And so what we find is that uh, Squirrel Girl makes her debut in issue number two of the uh, four-issue limited series of the Great Lakes Avengers. Now, again, this isn't necessarily the only volume of Great Lakes Avengers. The Great Lakes Avengers had existed for quite some time. They just simply weren't that prominent among the Marvel roster. But with the four-issue limited series, when she did appear in issue number two, she was inducted into the group of the Great Lakes Avengers. But this was really more out of a sign of desperation than it was for anything else because the Great Lakes Avengers really couldn't find anybody else to join their ranks. They had enlisted uh, various people like, uh, I guess, like, Luke Cage and, and so on, and all of them turned them down. And so with uh, Squirrel Girl becoming a part of the members of the Great Lakes Avengers, she lasted for about three issues or so. Now this follows into the 2005 Christmas special for the Great Lakes Avengers, and this is where Marvel really capitalized on the uh, the initial appearance of Squirrel Girl when she had defeated Doctor Doom. With her defeat of Doctor Doom and her initial appearance, it became this kind of running joke for Squirrel Girl. It became this kind of thing where Squirrel Girl was apparently unbeatable and she could defeat anybody. And so during the Christmas special, we saw her defeat MODOK, for example, when uh, MODOK was basically wreaking havoc and no one, uh, none of the S.H.I.E.L.D. agents were able to overpower him. And so when they had realized that uh, Squirrel Girl was on the way, of course, Dum Dum Dugan had said, thank God, because Squirrel Girl was going to be the one to save them all. And she was successful in doing this because what she had done was she threw one of her squirrels at the face of MODOK. But because MODOK's head was so large and his arms were so short, he couldn't thwart it. And so the squirrel just began lashing at his face. And so as a result, MODOK was defeated when the squirrel managed to enter the uh, body of MODOK and began, uh, began chewing away at the various, uh, I guess, components and cables that had kept him alive. And so from here, what we do is we again pick up with her character as she has apparently defeated Thanos. Now, the defeat of Thanos is one of the most prominent aspects of Squirrel Girl, but this actually happens off-panel. We don't see how it is that this happens. What we do is we simply just pick up with the defeat of Thanos when the Watcher is talking to her about what it is that's happened, and he confirms that this version of Thanos is not a robot, that it's not any kind of a clone that it is in fact the real Thanos telling us yet again that Squirrel Girl has managed to defeat someone that can't easily be defeated by some of the most prominent superheroes on the planet Earth. And so what we do is we pick up with Squirrel Girl during Civil War. And this again was just really a way for Marvel to acknowledge the fact that Squirrel Girl is still in existence, that she still does her own thing. And with Civil War, what we had seen was that with Cable and Deadpool issue number 30, I believe, that of course, as we had talked about in our Civil War videos, that Cable, I'm sorry, that Deadpool was looking for a way to prove himself as being a, a, a valuable member for the uh, pro superhero movement or pro registration movement. And so what he had done is he had ambushed the Great Lakes Avengers. And when he had ambushed the Great Lakes Avengers, among the people he had fought were Squirrel Girl. And while everybody else had been defeated, Squirrel Girl was able to defeat Deadpool. And the way she had done this was by scratching him with little paper cuts, cuts that were so small that his healing factor didn't register them. And so as a result, his body didn't heal. And so we simply just laid there and started bleeding until, uh, until uh, shield forces were able to arrive and uh, take him into custody. And this seems to be the way that Squirrel Girl was able to defeat her various nemesis by simply just scratching them to death, or at the very least seeking a bunch of squirrels on them so that the uh, squirrels would overpower them. And this again is a recurring theme that we see in New Avengers issue number 15. What we also learn is that apparently her and Wolverine had had some kind of a relationship in the past. Now, this is not overtly given to us. This is simply an instance whereby uh, Wolverine is engaging in, uh, I guess, in some kind of physical combat with uh, Danny Rand as a way to basically keep his skills up, to keep his skills honed. And when Squirrel Girl steps into the fray, that uh, Squirrel Girl and Wolverine have this kind of banter back and forth where Wolverine says it's just like old times, and Squirrel Girl says that, that uh, Wolverine seems to perceive their old times differently than she does. Again, really kind of pointing to the idea that they had some kind of involvement in the past. But for the most part, this is how Squirrel Girl functions. Now, because of the popularity of Squirrel Girl, because her popularity simply couldn't be denied by Marvel in relation to how many fans 
fans loved her character, what we see is that in 2014 that Marvel had basically launched her solo series. And this is the first time that Squirrel Girl has actually actually ever had a solo series of her own. But what's interesting here is that unlike Deadpool, Squirrel Girl has more of a niche following. She has more of a cult following, whereas Deadpool is a character who's popular among the masses. Everybody knows who Deadpool is. He's a comedic character. He's funny. He breaks the fourth wall. The Squirrel Girl is really more of a character who is just kind of confined to this smaller group of fans, but the fan base is ever growing for her character, which I would imagine would lead her to, be, to having more and more prominent roles in the Marvel continuity. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and bring this video to an end. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, let me know, and I will catch you guys later. Peace. Be sure to follow me on Twitter. There you can keep up with all the updates from Comics Explained and talk to me directly. Yeah.